we move forward to discuss uh, Vietnam, I'd like to uh, introduce our introducer, uh, who will um, get this next panel going. Uh, he is Chris Steinheimer from Urbana High School. Chris? All right, we are now starting our Vietnam War portion, um, featuring B.G. Burkett and Mr. Mark Moyer. Mr. B.G. Burkett, a military researcher, is the co-author of Stolen Valor, How the Vietnam Generation Was Robbed of Its Heroes and Its History, which won the coveted William G. Colby Award for Outstanding Military Book. Mr. Burkett also served as the co-chairman of the Texas Vietnam Memorial with former President Bush as honorary chairman. His work has been the subject of two Reader's Digest stories and award-winning pieces on ABC's 2020. He served in Vietnam with the 199th Light Infantry and was awarded the Bronze Star, Vietnamese Honor Medal, and the Vietnamese Cross of Gallantry with Palm. In 2003, he was awarded the Distinguished Civilian Service Award, the highest award given to the Army, given the Army gives a civilian by a former President George H.W. Bush. He was inducted into the U.S. Army Ranger Hall of Fame at Fort Benning, Georgia. Um, Mr. Mm, okay, sorry. Uh, Dr. Mark Moyer received his Bachelor's of Arts Summa Cum Laude in History from Harvard University and a PhD in History from Cambridge University. He holds the Kim T. Adamson Chair of Insurgency and Terrorism at the U.S. Marine Corps University in Quantanico, Virginia. His articles have been published in the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, the Washington Post, the National Review, the Christian Science Monitor, the New York Post, the New York Sun, Prior to writing Triumph Forsaken, he published Phoenix and the Birds of Prey, which is being republished in late 2007 in a new edition. Dr. Moyer has taught previously at Cambridge University, Ohio State University, and Texas A&M Uni University. Thanks for that introduction, and thank you to the Veterans Center for putting on this, uh, this wonderful event this year. Uh, this is my first opportunity to participate. I'm uh, extremely grateful to um, James Roberts and the staff of the Veterans Center for, for inviting me here, and thanks to all of you for, for coming to this event. Uh, I'm going to start off talking a little bit about the history uh, of Vietnam in general, the study of the war, and then I'm going to give a, a brief overview of what I think are key points in that history. Uh, now, I started uh, studying the Vietnam War in the early 1990s, and at that point in time, uh, Americans had largely lost interest in, in the history of that conflict. Um, if you were looking to sell history books, you would be writing about World War II or the Civil War, which were very popular and still are very popular. Um, at that time as well, government officials, uh, political scientists believed that Vietnam really wasn't very important because we were never going to get into a protracted insurgency war uh, again. Now, of course, Iraq has changed all of that. There's been much renewed interest in Vietnam. Uh, people of all persuasions have been looking at Vietnam to try to find facts that will support their preferred policies uh, in Iraq. Uh, the American troops who are going over to serve in Iraq and Afghanistan uh, are being very heavily exposed to the history of Vietnam since it is considered uh, our, our closest historical precedent. Now, more than 30 years have passed since the end of the Vietnam War, uh, but there still is very little agreement among historians about the war, and the divisions are in, in many ways similar to the divisions that arose among Americans during that conflict. Uh, the, now, the uh, early histories were written by and large by people who had uh, supported, or excuse me, who had opposed the war, and, and as a result of that fact that they dominated this early historical discussion, they became known as the orthodox school, and those who would challenge them would become the so-called revisionists. Uh, it's, in, it's really been in the last 10 years or so that the revisionists have really gained in influence, and most of these people are outside of the academic and media mainstreams, which 
uh, is really not a surprise because within both of those groups, uh, within both the media and academia, there remains uh, hostility to the Vietnam War and to those who, who would produce a different explanation for it. Uh, and if, if you want a good example of that, you can look at the reaction to President Bush's speech to the veterans of foreign wars on August uh, 22nd of this year. Now, among two of the revisionist books are, have, have been mentioned, my first one, Phoenix and the Birds of Prey, which was about the Phoenix program and other counterinsurgency measures during the latter years of the Vietnam War. Uh, and then, um, more recently, Triumph Forsaken, which is about the, the earlier years of the, uh, of the conflict. And uh, our other speaker here, Mr. Burkett, is also uh, his stolen valor ranks as, as one of the foremost uh, revisionist works. Uh, we talk about how the conventional view of Vietnam originated. And it, and it ri originated with three individuals who were journalists at the time and went on to write best-selling books. And their names are uh, David Hallerstam, Neil Sheehan, and Stanley Carno. Now, subsequent historians would refine what had been said by these individuals, but the basic contours that they had established, by and large, have, have remained. If you've read anything on Vietnam, you've probably read something by at least one of those three. And if you do read them, if you start off looking at the history from the beginning, they will talk about Vietnam as having a, a long history of fighting against China and against other foreign powers. Uh, and then this argument is used to say that the United States uh, really got it wrong in the 1960s because we thought that Vietnam and China were allies when, in fact, they were mortal enemies. But it turns out you know, these people did not actually go back and look at that history very closely because if you do, you'll find that there is, uh, between the late 10th century and the mid-20th century, a period of almost 1,000 years, there's a grand total of three wars between Vietnam and China, not these endless wars that you've been led to believe. Uh, in fact, the Vietnamese provoked all three of those, so they were not a, a victim of foreign aggression, certainly from China. I, and Vietnam, up until the time of the Vietnam War, had been, uh, or up until the late 19th century, had been a vassal of China. They paid tribute to the Chinese, and in return, China was the protector uh, of Vietnam. Now, the other part of this argument is that Ho Chi Minh, the, the Vietnamese communist leader, was really a nationalist. He was uh, someone who we could have used as an ally against China, much as um, we had used Tito, the Yugoslavian leader, against the Soviet Union. But Ho Chi Minh, I think, was clearly not this sort of nationalist leader. He was very much an internationalist who believed in global revolution. And he viewed nationalism as an impediment to that global revolu revolution. Uh, you look at his writings and his, his uh, speeches, he clearly emphasized the uh, international aspect of Marxism-Leninism. Uh, the way he patterned his country and his government was very much along the lines of doctrinaire Marxist-Leninism. Uh, he actually denounced Tito, we know, for breaking off from the communist movement in the name of internationalism. Uh, and he was, in fact, very close to the Chinese. He lived in China for many years. He served in the Chinese army. Uh, and he worked closely with Mao Zedong in achieving independence. Now, the Halberstam, Sheen, Carno narrative, as, as I like to call it, was also completely wrong about South Vietnam's president, Ngo Dinh Diem, uh, who became president in 1954 and served until 1963 when he was assassinated. 